Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. This is the part where y'all say Sabbath peace. Sorry, it's all right. <laughs> it's all right, y'all. I forget. It's your first time. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua, whom we call Jesus. Uh, in him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and give him freely, as any, uh, give him freely to anyone who obeys him. What? Give him freely as a gift to anyone who obeys him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, a fancy house, new car, new darn job, I don't care what it is, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, peace to the ones watching in on the camera, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is what? Repent. That they might live. Right out to the ladies here. We can't keep them quiet. Yeah, I think tough. I'm already ready to whip them butt. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm already ready to get some butt. That's crazy. Hey! <laughs> going down in there too. Be quiet! All right, let's go ahead and go to uh, where we want to go. <coughs> what are we talking about? Where we want to go? Uh, let's go to Isaiah chapter 28. <laughs> it might be a long night. <laughs> now, it's, no, it's nowhere near either one of those. So, okay. Oh, you got it. Oh, you know what I'm saying? You got a tablet too. Why you gonna ask me? You got a tablet. See my man Zeke real with man. No, I'm talking about Zeke. Well, I said it's fun tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, y'all y'all play quietly. I have a children's book. I ain't one of them. That's you been all right. With the pictures in it. Put the white Jesus on it. It's Isaiah chapter 28. Give me verse 9. It's Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9. Let's see what this book's talking about. It's important for <coughs> we go here, you know what I'm saying? Since y'all knew, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna try to try to break some of the things down. We go here for a reason. We 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 often start off here. Um, it's because right here, the Most High God kind of lets us know what to expect. It kind of gives us an extra. It's one of those things that's like that's in the Bible that a lot of people kind of read over and don't understand and don't get. But this kind of sets you up because it, it can be frustrating when you when you you know what I'm saying make a change and you want to go down this route. That thing can get tough. That thing can get real frustrating for many reasons, right? So one of these things it kind of kind of sets the expe uh, what is it, the expectations. You know what I'm saying? Once you get there, now now you can kind of go forward and know. Okay, this is what God said it's going to be like. All right, so this is Isaiah chapter 28. This is about verse 9. Let's see what the book got to say. To whom shall he teach knowledge? He said, to whom shall he teach knowledge? This is a question, right? So who is he going to teach the knowledge to? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? And who is he going to make to understand doctrine? What's doctrine? Teaching. Teaching, right? So who is he going to get a knowledge to and who is going to understand that teaching? Right? Two questions he asks. Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. So he gives a suggestion. Is it going to be the ones that weaned from the milk? What that mean if you weaned from the milk? Like a baby. He looks like a little toddler. You know what I'm saying? You just, you just got off the breast. Right? He said it's going to be the ones that just weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Okay. It's going to be babies? He asked a question. Who is going to understand this teaching? Right? Who is it going to be? Is it going to be babies? Little kids that's going to understand it? What else is going to happen after that? Well, precept must be upon precept. Do you understand what these kids would have to do? They would have to take precept and put it upon precept. What's a precept? A commandment. He said you you would have to take commandment and put it on top of commandment. And what else? Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. You have to take this line, you have to put it on top of that line. And what else? Here a little and there a little. You have to take a little bit from here and a little bit from there and put them things together. What does that sound like? You know what I'm saying? What is that? What he's describing? What does it kind of sound like? Sound like a puzzle. Sound like a little puzzle. Like you got you got what? Sound like confusion. Sound like darn confusion. You break out a puzzle, and you know what I'm saying. You take, you know what I'm saying. Maybe a simple puzzle, like a thousand word, you know what I'm saying. A thousand, uh, a thousand uh, piece puzzle. You know what I'm saying. You dump that thing out in front of the card butt, and just tell him to put it, up, put it together. What do you think he gonna do? Look at it. Kai gonna look at that thing, and just make a mess. He might just take it out, put it, you know, put a piece in his mouth or something. 
He's certainly not gonna be able to put it. He's not gonna be able to take this piece and be like, okay, you know what? That one go with this one over here, and that one go with this one over here. But if you give him that same puzzle, right? He make a mess out of it, and you work with him with it year after year. Eventually, guess what he'll be able to do? Oh man, let me tell you. You know what I'm saying? This thing go. He turned seven, eight, nine. Oh, let me show you. No, this one go right there. You see the picture right there. He be explaining that thing to you. That's how it works. The most high guys letting you know this thing is a puzzle. This thing ain't no. Don't let these people lie to you. Open up this book. Just start reading from Genesis. That's all you gotta do. Just start reading from Genesis. The Lord will move on you. He'll reveal it to you. That's a lie. That's a darn lie. You open up this book. You gotta understand it. You gotta put pieces together. You gotta have a teacher, or the most high God gotta teach you himself. And guess what? He ain't gonna teach. Oh. Let's go. Hold on. We're going to come right back here. Let's go to uh, Hebrews chapter 5. We might just shoot from the hip tonight. It's Hebrews chapter 5, verse, uh, what verse? 6? The end of 5 or the beginning of 5? Hebrews chapter 5, what I want, verse 6? 7? Give me Hebrews chapter 5, verse 6. I feel like if we choose verse 6, we can't miss it. Maybe, maybe verse 3. 16, what I want? Talk about Melchizedek and six. Yeah, that's what I want. Okay. Yeah, this, this Hebrews chapter five, verse six. I don't want that, but what I want to come right after that. What I want, five? What five say? Hebrews chapter five, verse five. Glorify not himself. Nah, it's six. So this Hebrews chapter five, verse six. <coughs> now, Q, your butt should be here too. What you talking about? <laughs> you know what I mean? Wasn't he in the bet? Freak was in the bet. All these boys in the bed. I still want to. Everybody got to pay up. Yeah, you should be here too. I'm saying, hi, Zeke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Zeke might need help back there. Look. Yeah, I can't. Oh, I found it. Trying to find it. Bring some of the Go play, man. What do we want? Verse 6? What? Water? Yeah. Oh, happy anniversary, bro. What's that water? It's water. Just drink it. Alright. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 6. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, mm -hmm. who in days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him, mm -hmm. and was able to save him from death, and was heard in that he feared. Mm -hmm. Though he were a son, yet he learned obedience. He said, though he were a son, yet he learned obedience. He's the son of God. He's talking about y'all. She was talking about Jesus, right? Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience. He had to still learn obedience. Remember how we started out? We started out talking about who's going to understand this. Is it going to be the kids? going to be the babies that understand this? They got to put precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Right? The kids, it's going to be a little difficult for a kid. So even, even the son of the Most High God said, oh, even though he were the son, guess what he still had to learn? Obedience. <clears throat> Very important. Right? Still had to learn obedience. What came after that? About the things which he suffered. Right? Then he had to suffer to learn them things. Keep going. Being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. All them that do what? Obey him. Okay, so now obedience popped up twice so far, right? Let's see, keep going. Called of God, a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Uh huh. Of whom we have many things to say and heard to be uttered. But why, why, why we can't talk about it right now? Seeing you are dull of hearing. He said, Y'all dull of hearing, right? He said, I got a whole lot to say. I'm talking about Melchizedek. Melchizedek. Is a, is, a, is, a, is a person that was mentioned in the Bible way back in Genesis. This toward the end of the book now. And so what he's trying to do, he's teaching now. He's like, he's like man, it's a whole lot of stuff y'all don't know about Melchizedek. I can't even get into it with you. Why? Because you're dull of hearing. So this is all related to what we're talking about. We opened up at Isaiah. Isaiah was like, listen, who going to learn this? The kids? The kids? So now you would think we're talking about physical kids. No, no, no. Paul tell us right now, or the writer of Hebrews will tell us right now. Watch this. But when the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. Uh-huh. And are become such as have need of milk and, and not of strong meat. Right? So he said, now you acting like somebody who needs milk and not of strong meat. You acting like a baby now. Right? Spiritually. Right? He said, this, like, you should be a teacher right now. At this point, y'all should be teachers. But you know what? I can't even get into all this deep stuff with you because... 
you know, you act like somebody who needs milk, not necessarily strong meat. So this goes back to what we was reading in Isaiah. Who's, who's going to learn this? The one just drawn from the milk? Right? They got to take precept upon precept. He's trying to let you. You're not skilled in the word yet. It takes something to be skilled in the word. You notice that before that, he was talking about obedience. Right? Watch what he say next. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a baby. Right? The simple things. Right? I'm talking to you about simple things. Simple things, you're unskillful in the word. Not a bad thing. Everybody got to start somewhere. Not a bad thing, but he's letting you know. Let's just understand, if you in the simple things of the word, we don't talk about what those simple things are. You talking about them basic principles of the word? Oh, yeah. I mean, you just unskillful in the word, right? This is how you can identify. Nobody taught us this stuff. So when we go, we go into a church, we see a pastor, he get, oh, in the Lord, <laughs> and do all that stuff. We think, oh, that man, oh, that's a man of God there, ain't he? Look how he huff and puff. That's a darn man of God there. That's somebody we can work. But we don't know how to judge it. Right? Y'all play, you know what I'm saying? What y'all play? Basketball? You know what I'm saying? Y'all play basketball, you know what I'm saying? Y'all into it. Not too into it because y'all know the Lakers wasn't going to get. But listen, <laughs> we ain't even going to, listen, we not even going to get into all that. Right? When you play a sport, you ever, you ever saw somebody, you play the sport. I mean, you in it. You know what I'm saying? You play it. Then you saw somebody who don't play the sport try to come and try to judge somebody who play it. Like, oh, look, he tight because his shoes is cool. Like, man, he ain't even, yeah, boy, you know what I'm saying? That boy jumper off. You know what I'm saying? He don't never pass the ball. He don't know none of the fundamentals. But you know that because you look and you're like, yeah, but if you put some D on that boy, he going to lose that ball right away. I mean, he look nice when nobody guarding him. But if you put some D on that, you put a little bit of pressure on that boy, he going to, you know because you're familiar. But if you don't know no better, it's like he gets the dribbling going through his legs. Oh, man, he the coldest man out here because you don't know no better. Same thing spiritually. Same thing, we go to these churches, we talk to these people, see them on, you see T.D. Jakes, the man write a whole book for you, Purpose Driven Life. You read that thing, be like, he got the truth. You open up this book and learn from it and compare it to what he's talking about, if you don't get the junk out of my darn face, ain't got no time to be listening to this stuff, because these people don't know what they're talking about, right? But we don't know, nobody's taught us to be able to identify what they're talking about. So this is, what, this is what the writer of Hebrews is trying to explain. He's trying to let us know, listen, it's some deep stuff. We've been dealing with the basics. We've been talking about basic stuff. You know what I'm saying? I can tell y'all about Melchizedek, right? He tells me, I can tell you about Melchizedek. It's some deeper stuff we can get into. But you know what? I can't even do it right now. You know why? Y'all dull of hearing. Y'all ain't ready for it. You just getting into the milk. So let's hurry and let's understand what this milk is. Let's see. But strong meat belongs to them that are full of age, uh -huh. a full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses. By what? Inside. Reason of what? Reason of use. What does that mean, by reason of use? Practice. By practice. He said, so remember, the context of what we're talking about is understanding the word, right? Understanding the word. So he said, milk is akin to somebody who doesn't really understand the word well. You're not skillful with the word. Strong meat is somebody who does understand the word. You are skillful with it, Right? He said the only way that you can get from milk to, skill, to, to being skilled or being, get, to get that strong meat is by reason of use. So that practice. You got to take this little bit that you know, put it into practice. That's why he was talking about obedience before because you take the little bit that you know, you obey, and then the most I got open up your brain to understand more. Open up your heart to understand more. Right? You get to this place where it's like, oh, now I get it. Right? You go to the average church, you go to the average Christian, the average Muslim, the average people, they don't obey what they teach. They don't obey what they learn. They just move. They just do. They learn a little bit. They feel like they know a little bit, but that's why things splinter. Because I feel like I know something. I do, right? I know a little something. I go start my own church based off of this little bit that I know. Most of God make a fool out of it. He's like, ah, you, didn't, you really don't know that, and you're not obeying with, with the little bit that you do know. So then he let us believe we know something. We start a little church based off of it. And then now you got 33,000 different Christian denominations all looking at the same book. Right? All of us. Me too. Like we all, we all looking at the same book and then we all come up to different conclusions. Right? That happens for a reason. Hush! That happens for a reason. Right? Watch this. Keep going. Because we got to understand, it ain't enough for us to just know that it happens. We need to know, how can we identify this? What? Wait, what? Fighting. Falling. No, go play something.
Tell him go, go take TV. care of your brother, boy. Your go brother crying. Tell him to stop crying. Eli, go play, man. What we got? Therefore, having the principles of the doctrine of the Messiah. Having the principles? Yeah. Right here when we say principles, um, remember a lot of this that we read in the kind of old English. Right? So it has some of the same meanings of the words that we use today, but they, they used... Uh, they use, like today, the words, a lot of the words they use today, it'll be like the second or third definition in, in Webster. For them at that time, that third one was the first one. So when you say principles, it's talking about basics, right? Same meaning technically, but when we use principles now, we kind of use it as like uh, uh, like the, the most important part, right? It's not that, that this means something different. It's just it, the point that he's trying to make, these are the, these are the basics. It's the foundation. This is where you start, right? So having the principles, right? The doctrine of the Messiah, let us go on unto perfection. Not what? Unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. So now he's 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 <coughs> lifting off the principles, the basics, what you start with. The, the one the first thing you start with is repentance from dead works and faith towards God. What's that? Uh ceasing from sin. That's turning away from sin. That's the I mean that's basic. That's just like a no-brainer. You got that. That you can't even you can't even start you can't even start talking about the Bible unless you know that, right? Just basic. Repent from dead works and faith toward God. That means you gotta turn from sin and you put your faith towards God. That's basic, right? What's another basic? Of the doctrine of baptisms. Baptism, right? Understanding baptism that's a basic. Just ba I mean you you ain't even supposed to be out here kicking it until you do that, right? You understand baptism. Okay, basic. Let's see what else. And of laying on of hands. Laying on the hands like praying, right? So praying, that's another thing. Just a basic concept. These are basic concepts, right? What else? And of resurrection of the dead. Resurrection of the dead, right? That's a basic. Like, we don't even hear about that one, no, huh? You know what I'm saying? Resurrection of the dead. Basic concept. That's like, that bottom foundation. I mean, you ain't even supposed to graduate unless you get that one, right? And what's the last one? And of eternal judgment. Eternal judgment. Going to hell, pretty much, right? Eternal judgment, right? Basic. All these are the basic principles. Now, when we go, when we go to our churches, and we listen to these people tell us and teach us the Bible, what do they focus on week after week? Not even all of those topics, just certain aspects of these topics, right? They tell you about grace, forgiveness, uh, having faith, right? That's those, those are going to be the topics week after week. They're gonna flip it. They're gonna freaking see that thing every week. They be like, oh, let's talk about faith this time. Oh, you remember when Peter walked on the water? Oh, now you can have faith because when God told you that you were going to lose that job, you didn't step on the metaphorical water of your life. Yes? Um, Kai fell off the bed. All right, stop falling off the bed. You're all right. You're a big boy. Handle it up. Man up. Tell your brother to man up. Man up, Kai. That's right. All right, so you look at him, and he, they, they try to tell you, they try to tell you, you know what I'm saying, the metaphorical, you know what I'm saying, water that you supposedly walk on. God is calling you onto the water today. Right, and so they kind of they they flip these stories in the Bible. Really, all they teaching you is faith. Right, they saying have faith in God about whatever it is you want. Right, these are basic kind of grace. Look, you can turn you can turn from your evil ways and you can turn to a new way. That's grace. Right, they teach you about grace all the time. Grace, grace, grace. Right, these are basic concepts that we get taught. So, what should that tell us about our pastors? That they're unskilled with the word. Right. They can't get into these deep subjects. Matter of fact, you go to some of these churches. We didn't been to them. You go to these some of these churches and we try to tell them, yeah, let, let's talk about this. They be like, listen, listen, brother. You know what I'm saying? We, we can't even get into that. See, all that don't even matter. You know what matters? Just that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sin. Oh, pastor, that's basic. You, If that's where you want to stick, you ain't even, it ain't even appropriate for you to be, you still dull of hearing it ain't even appropriate for you to be teaching this word. Is it, okay, is it appropriate for someone who's unskilled in basketball to be a coach? I wouldn't understand that. It wouldn't, it wouldn't even make sense. You look at him and everybody knows, like, this man can't play. He don't know nothing about no darn basketball. And then he comes in there and he's like, no, nah, I'll be the coach. We not rolling. We good. But like, no, nah, we all right. But since we are, we haven't been taught to identify when a man or a woman is unskilled to teach the word, we accept it because now we're looking at we're judging based off of factors that that are uh, that are uh, instinctive to us. They speak well. They're entertaining. They put they, they they're inspiring to me. 
right? So those are the factors that we judge, and they are those things. And we look, okay, well, that must be a good speaker. No, it's a good motivational speaker. And that's somebody that's, that's somebody you, you know what I'm saying, a TED talk. Like, yeah, it's good for that. It's not good for, to get you into heaven. It's not good to get you, get you resurrected, right? It's not good for any of those things. You have to go deeper. You have to be skilled with the word. Let's hear about it. Let's go back to uh, Isaiah chapter 28. Let's see if we can make the rest of this make sense. The man just told it. He's like, I don't know who's going to learn this word. Who's going to understand the teaching? Who's going to understand the doctrine? Is it going to be the old who, who, who was weaned from, the, uh, weaned from the breast? Drawn from the milk and weaned from the breast. He said, precept have to be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. For with stammering what? For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. To whom he said what? To whom he said, this is the, re the rest, wherewith you may cause the weary to rest. This is the key, right? The man told you with stammering lips in another tongue. What is that? What is a stammering lip? What is that? What is that? A stutter. That's a stutter. Right? And he said with another tongue. What does that mean when he said another tongue? That's a different language. So he said, with stammering lips and another tongue, will he speak to this people? So you have to understand, he's, he's, he's laying out this narrative for you. Who's going to learn this book? Is it going to be the babies? Because the babies would have to take this to here and there and put all this stuff together. He is like, that wouldn't make sense because I'm speaking to those people as if I got a stutter problem. And if somebody speaks to you with a son, they're like, and what the first thing going to come in, what are you trying to say to me? Somebody speaks to you in Spanish, you don't speak no Spanish. You know what I'm saying? Speak to you in German, you don't speak, you know what I'm saying? Speak to you in Russian. They're like, ah, you know what I'm saying? You looking at them like, I don't know what this guy is trying to say to me. So when we open up this book, you know what I'm saying? You try to open up this book, you try to read it by yourself. You know what I'm saying? You got to look into it. First thing people be coming out with, I have no idea what God's message is for my life. That's why T.D. Jakes writes the book called what? The Purpose Driven Life. Because he's trying to tell you this is what God is trying to say to you. God's will for your life. You see all these books when you go in the spiritual section, God's will for your life. All that because they know the need is what is God saying to me? Because if, if we knew, if, if it was that easy to figure out what God was saying to you, we'd just open up the book. So these people make books about a book to try to tell you what God is saying. Because the need is, I don't know. We always wonder, it must be something wrong with me because God, I don't know what God is saying to me. We open up this book, we like, I don't get it. It must be something wrong with me. Right? I don't know about everybody. It's me, though. I'm like, I have, I have to be wrong. I'm stupid. I don't get it. God is not speaking to me. He don't care about me. God don't love me. I don't know God. I'm doing something wrong because when I'm looking at this, I'm like, what is he trying to say? Like, what, what, what is this for me? Right? So guess what changes that? When you look at the man, he tells you, when you look at this, it's going to be like a stammering lip or another tongue. He's telling you this is what it's going to, this is how it starts. You a baby. The baby, you got to put all these different pieces together. When you put no piece together, it's like me talking to you with a stutter. It's like me talking to you with like, like in a different language. You're not going to understand nothing I'm telling you. Right? Then after that, he said what? This is the rest wherewith you might be, you may cause the weary to rest. And this is the what? And this is the refreshing. But what? Yet they would not hear. But them folks would not hear. So you know what happens? We get that feeling. We open up the book. We like, what is God trying to say to me? So then we give up. You know what we go do? We go buy the purpose driven life. Or we go buy, we go buy, uh, you know what I'm saying, God's will for your life. Or all these different titles that attempt to explain what the Bible is saying for you and make it personal. We go get those. And by doing that, we did not hear what God was saying. We hear what T.D. Jakes is saying. We hear what, you know what I'm saying, whatever, you know, Joyce Myers, whoever these people are. We hear what they're saying because they're very eloquent people. They've, they've written it to, to personalize it to you. They're skilled when it comes to writing. They're not skilled when it comes to the word. So some of the message, although probably well intended, right? They probably have every intention to give you good information. But because they're not skilled with the words and by accident, they give you information that you don't need or they give you not enough information, which leads you to make assumptions. Right. And that's what the majority of us do. We end up making assumptions so much so that we go from this denomination to this denomination, to that religion, to that religion. And after a while, we get so tired of making those assumptions. Guess what we do? You know what? 
I don't deal with a religion at all. You know what I am? I'm spiritual. God talks to me. I, I mean, God, me and him, we got our understanding. So we just start making up stuff because it's like now I don't want to be held down to none of this like individual stuff because it's too, it's, that's crushing to just be like, okay, no, no, I believe it this way. Somebody look, come up to you and be like, no, 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 that's all wrong. Don't be believing the Jehovah's Witnesses. Believe the Mormons, right? And they lay it out and that thing makes sense to you. Be like, I'm a Mormon now. And somebody else come along and be like, no, no, the Mormons is this, that, and the other. Believe the Hebrew Israelites. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm black. You black. We the people of the book. Okay, I'm a Hebrew Israelite now. Then somebody else come along, the Muslim come around, crush that stuff. You be like, look, man, I'm tired of this. Because every time you're looking at it, like, and you know something wrong because they prove it. And then you be like, oh, I'm done with that. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm just spiritual. I know there's a God. Right? I do know that. So you know what? I'm just spiritual. God judge me when he judge me. And you kind of give up on all of it. Give up on trying to find the exact truth. And now your whole life is an assumption. Your whole life is just like, well, there's a God. And I assume this is how he wants me to be. But if you assuming this is how he wants you to be, who's really making that decision? Like, who's really setting the rules at that point? Yourself. You are. Yeah, you ever had people to be like, ooh, my gut is telling me. That, you know what I'm saying? It's really their gut, but guess what they're going to say? Oh, God is telling me don't do that. Right? I ain't, I ain't God telling me. I'm in the darn Justin. What you talking about? You better go poop. You know what I'm saying? But but what's happening is they are making a decision based off of their they, 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 they intuition. So now who becomes God? Their intuition, their self, their own fears, their own their own confidences. They, be, they become God to themselves. In their mind, I'm spiritual. I'm dealing with God right now. In reality, though, it's just an assumption, right? So what we try to do is, what we want to do is get back to the book. Exactly what it say, guess what? That's what that thing mean. Line it up. Everybody, you come through here, guess what? That thing got to line up. We have folks try to come through here, right? Mormon, Muslim, they all these people. The uh, Church of Christ, all of them, guess what? They start off, all the conversations start off the same way. How they start off? You go straight from the book. Look, brother, I just want you to know. My denomination, we go straight from the book. That's all we do. Hebrew is like, we go straight from the book. Everybody start off with the same line. That thing irritating because it's like, dang, that's our line. We go straight from the book too. So at the beginning, you can't tell the difference. Good, everybody in the same room, we all go straight from the book. It should be a nice meeting. We should now have one disagreement. We should all leave here and just be like, you know what? We all went straight from the book, guys. We didn't have to say nothing extra. Why in the world, though, does it never turn out that way? Why does it always end up with, no, no, no. See, you can't trust what Paul said. I thought we was going straight from the book. Oh, see, no, no, no. The white folks put that in there. What happened to going straight from the book? You bust their darn butt with that book. They never learned it. Nobody taught this stuff. Wait, who going to teach us? Who going to teach us the book? Do y'all know our history? The history of this book? My fault. Right? Let's break down a little. I mean, just a little bit. Real quick, just break down a little bit of history. You got Hebrews. Hebrews originally was black, right? Little known fact, right? Not a big deal. Hebrews was originally black, the Israelites. We lived in the land of Israel, the same Israel that people call Israel right now. We lived in that land, right? So then, Hebrews then were taken over eventually by Romans. Romans shut that whole show down. Because just like Hebrews are today, black people are today, right? They was that same way that rebellious and, you know what I'm saying, kind of stuck up. We always ran the culture. Think about it right now. What runs our culture now? Hip-hop. Hip-hop, right? And so then hip-hop then runs what? Everything. If you want to trend, who you going to try to who you gonna try to get to, to wear your fashion? Hip-hop. That thing got to be hip-hop. And then it ends up correlating, right? So now look at it. You look at the Bible. How much of the world is based off of this book? Yeah. Like probably half of it I mean, you look at America's laws. Where they come from? The Bible. Mm. Where they get marriage from? The Bible. Where they get seven years Free and get rid of your debt? The Bible. All that stuff is our book, right? Where you get? I mean, okay. So now, month comes from the word moon, right? So you look up in the sky, you can see the moon. That's where you get a month from. A year is because the sun has cycled, right? Or the world really has cycled the sun. One full time, right? So, you know what I'm saying? You can look at the sun and you can get a year, right? A day 
is just the earth that spin one time. Okay, so you can get a day. What are we missing there? Uh, a week. A week. What can you look at in the sky and be like, okay, it's been one week? Nothing. Guess where the week came from? Most High God said it's going to be seven days. And on the seventh, we're going to call that the Sabbath. Tell one of these scientists, tell you. They can explain away every one of them. Where'd you get a week from, though? Why did you split that up? How did that link? So just like how our culture runs the cultures now, it's always run the cultures. Same people, right? So we take that. We run in cultures. We start, Yahushua come, Jesus, right? Jesus come, he died on the cross, he resurrect. Um, his teaching starts to spread. And it spreads to these white folks. It spreads to the, to the Gentiles, the Europeans, right? In ancient times. As they spread, they start looking at us and they like, oh, okay, we need to learn from them. So they start learning from us, right? After a while, the Romans like, oh, we're not having it. Because now it's, it's causing controversy. We like to sacrifice what we want. We like to eat the meat that we want. We like to have the orgies that we want. We don't like under that. So now a lot of their citizens is like, no, we don't go for that. We don't participate in this, right? And they, 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 more, they more on it than we are. So they killing each other over this stuff. So the, the, the Romans is like, oh, no, we got to shut this down. So the first thing they do after some fires got set in Rome, some people say that Romans set their own fires just to have a reason to go after them. Some people don't. Same type of stuff they're going on today, right? After the fires went on, they started to attack, right? So they got the Romans. After a while, I mean, got the, the Hebrews. After a while, they sent the Hebrews in uh, Africa to, to exile. Some of them, they took as slaves in Rome, right? So black <coughs> Hebrews, slaves in Rome, went into Africa. It was shut down. But the Gentiles, right, the, the white, the people who are not Hebrew, the white folks and the different races that was around in Europe still had our teaching. But they didn't have the teachers because we were removed. We were made slaves or we were made to uh, go into Africa and had to escape. So now you just have people who just learned something and now they are, they're forced to teach each other, right? A lot of people are going to tell y'all, oh, the white man took this and this, like, that, none of that is necessarily true. It's true, but it's not, it's not like there's some evil conspiracy. You can see exactly how it happens. It's all documented in history. These people learned something that's very new to them, and while it was very new, the people who taught it were removed out of the picture. So now you're forced to teach something and make assumptions. So now I have to teach my brother, my Gentile brother, hey, this is how you understand the Bible. This is what this means. But they're not from our culture. They don't know. They don't know the the history behind there are it. No Hebrews to teach to teach the Europeans anything about it because we were all banished. So they had to make assumptions. They had to make guesses. So that's how you get Christianity, right? Remember, we didn't call ourselves Christian. Christian is a is a is a Greek word, right? It's, it's a Christos or, or uh, Christianos, right? It's a Greek word. There's no Hebrew word that correlates to that. So we we didn't call ourselves Christians. That's what Romans called. Hebrews. Any Hebrew that was following uh, who they call Christos, which would be Christ, right? Any Hebrew that was following the Messiah, in their language, the way you say Messiah is Christos. So they were saying, oh, you're a Christianos. You follow the Messiah, right? So in that sense, they came up with Christians. So they used to call us Christians. Same way they used the N word, right? Nigga, 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 right? So they call us, what we start calling ourselves after that? No, we start calling ourselves nigga, 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 yeah. right? Because we adopted. So they did the same thing to us and to their own people. Oh, you follow that that that, that Hebrew religion? No, you ain't nothing but a Christian. Christian, 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 Christian. After a while, we get removed. So now the only people left is the same people who calling people Christians. So my brother called me a Christian. I am a Christian to him. I'm not a Christian to myself. I call myself a disciple. But that's my brother. That's my people. We speak the same language. So after a while, guess what? I don't care. You call me a Christian if you want to call me a Christian. I'm a Christian then. And guess what I'm going to start calling myself? Christian. So then that moves, right? Then you have Christians. Then you have people that set up, right? Our book teaches us to have bishops. So the bishops get set up as Gentiles now. Guess what the bishops start calling themselves? Fathers. Guess what our book tells us directly not to call yourself? A father, right? He said, no man is your father, right? No man is your father, only the father above. But guess what? Guess what Pope means? Uh, means Papa. Papa. Right? Father. Right? So these things start creeping in. Now it's tradition and they don't know that. They don't have the information to counteract the tradition. So that's why when you take these boys back to the word, their they whole thing is built up off of tradition. You take them back to that word, it's like, oh, I didn't realize that was there. 
or I read that, but because I had tradition, I didn't even, that thing never even hit me. I just read right over it, right? Because they're unskilled. So then that happens. You had a pope, right? Hundreds of years, hundreds of years going by and things just being handed down. Catholics eventually got it. You had a Council of Nicaea. You might hear people talk about that when you start getting into the Bible stuff. Be like, oh, the Bible, that was the Bible created in the Council of Nicaea. Stop telling these lies. The Bible wasn't created in the Council of Nicaea. But there was a Council of Nicaea where they took different doctrines of Christianity because you had this group doing that, this group doing that, and the Catholics came together and they said, you know what? There's one way of teaching it. And anybody teaching anything else, they started to push them out, move them out, right? They got stronger and stronger. So really all you have is Catholics. As you start getting to the 1400s, 1600s, then you now have start to start to have groups that splinter off and do their own thing. That's where you have Protestants. Protest is where it comes from, right? So you have people that protest the Catholic Church. So you have Protestants now. So that's where your Baptists come from. That's where your, uh, your uh, Calvinists, your, Calvinist, Methodist. your Methodists, all these different denominations that we hear about today, they started to splinter off from the Catholic Church. They was like, no, nah, we don't believe what you're teaching. Still have to make assumptions because who's going to teach them how it actually goes? So they like, I know some of this stuff is wrong. Let me start my own. In a book, in a book, anybody that heard anything from God was a Hebrew. He never gave anything divine outside of a Hebrew. So there's uh, no example of it. Right. Yeah, there's, there's no, no prophet, no nothing that that wasn't a Hebrew, not a prophet of God at least. And even if he, even the people that was teaching the Gentiles, teaching the white people at the time were Hebrews. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, like, back in the day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So eventually they got to a place where they had to figure it out by themselves. Yeah. Then, hey! What? And then as our identity get taken away, nobody know we Hebrews now, so ain't nobody gonna come and learn from like a Hebrew. Neither are we, right? We right. get to a place where we don't even know we Hebrew. If you go to Africa right now, you'll see people, these untouched villages, right? You got untouched villages, don't nobody mess with them, ain't nobody came and colonized them, none of that. Untouched villages, you'll see them keeping some of our same practices. I got I got quotes. From one of the slaves that got picked up and he later got got freed and went went into uh, London, I believe. Right? And he was talking about, oh, this is what my people do. We do this, that, and the other. And he is like, when I went to London and met with the white Jews, I was like, it, he is like, it's some, we do the same things. Like some of the same things, like circumcision, like we do the circumcision. My people, we take that serious. So it's a whole lot of little things that just we've always kept. They don't even know who they are. He didn't even know who he was. But you look at it it's like, why do we keep these same things? We don't have no technology. Nobody came and gave us a Bible. We don't have nothing written down. It's just things that we pass now. You have right now Hebrews in, in Africa that tell a story of a man who split a sea. They don't call him Moses. They don't know his name. They, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes his name. But their stories are the same. They say it wasn't thousands of years ago. They say, man, it was like 100 years ago. So the timings feel different because it's just passed down. There's nothing that's written. It's just passed down and they keep these stories around. Right? These are villages that are untouched. All of it's there. So we forget who we were. We, who we were. Then we have uh, Gentiles who then also forget who we are. They start to teach themselves. It goes, turns into Protestants. At that same time, we get picked up as slaves. So a little bit after that, about 1600s. All right, well, about 1500s. We start to get picked up as slaves. We go to America. We get taken from Africa under a conspiracy from the, the, uh, the Portuguese, the Spaniards, and all that. They, they take us over into America, right? At that exact same time, King James is writing a book. And or, uh, he's copying the Bible, rather. And he's putting it in, in English and making it accessible to everybody. It was the first time that it was like a Bible that was produced mass, right? Because the, the, the technology it just came out and he had the money to do it. So he mass produced the Bible because he was against the Catholic Church, right? Mass produced, same time, Hebrews coming to America. So now Gentiles start coming to America, moving as pilgrims. We're also there serving them. And guess what they teach us? The Bible. So it's a sick, it's a sick thing, but God set it up this way. It's a sick thing that this is our book that a long time ago we were teaching you this. And now you've given us the dumbed down, traditionalized, you know, messed up version of it. And now we're learning it back. And now we call, start calling ourselves Southern Baptists. So now it comes full circle to where now we're teaching the same stuff that they're teaching. Meanwhile, our ancestors taught them the real version of it. So that's why we have to get back to it. When you look and we understand the history, when we, when, when we read this book, what do we do? Focus in the New Testament? No. What do we try to do? We focus on the Old Testament. So we try to go back to the history. That's what we're reading right now. Like if, if, if this would have been a regular night, we would have been talking about, um, we would have been talking about uh, uh, Daniel, I mean David. 
right? David and his son Solomon, I think we was probably going to get to today, right? Because we want to, it's important to understand the history. When you go to these churches, even black churches, what do they tell you about the Old Testament? Done away with. It's done away with. The reason why, why, where do you think we would have got that idea from? Like the history, the, the, the part of it that's history. Why would that part be done away with? Because Gentiles was teaching up and it wasn't about them. The Gentile wouldn't have had no connection to the history. Their connection would have been to, oh, Jesus came on the scene and said, this is for everybody. Before that, oh, we were stuck up. Oh, you want to be a part of what we got going on? Oh, well, you got to keep all our laws. You got to live in our land. You're not about to live. Oh, oh you in Rome. Oh, you're a Roman citizen. Oh, no, we, it wouldn't even be appropriate for me to even talk to you. That's how we work. That's not necessarily how the Bible tells us to be, but you can look in our history and you can see in the Bible, you can see our people were that stuck up. We were stuck up like we knew we're God, because we knew we're God's chosen people, right? We knew that. Like, we knew it. We knew. We've seen. We got it documented of the miracles that we do. All these other Gentiles knew about some of these miracles, so they came to us like, oh, your God is so real. So we looking at them like, huh, you couldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to come around here. I'll allow you this once. Right? That's how we were. That's why the world hated us. That's why God was like, I got something for y'all. Because we not doing what we supposed to do. So yeah. that's why this happened. All this is God's plan. All of us in the book. That's a whole different study. But all of us in the book, the way it happened, us forgetting who we were, us uh, being taught by the Gentiles, the Gentiles replacing us, all that's in the book. All of us in the book. So now you got a whole other people that the whole world believes is us, that we believe is us. We believe that y'all are the real Jews, the real, the real Israelites, right? And they sitting in this land, in our land, and all that's in the book. Books say, I'm going to move a different people to this land. I'm going to move you to jealousy with a people that don't know what they're talking about. And you're going to have to deal with it. He said, like, one day, you're going to open their eyes. And we're coming towards that day, <coughs> right? All these things happen, but you get to this point where you have all these denominations and you have even black people in these denominations teaching the denominational teaching and they think they're going straight from the book only because no one has had a chance to teach them what straight from the book really is. So who would teach us this? Going back to what we, to what we started with. How would they know? I try not to look. It's frustrating, but I try not to look down on it because it's like, how you going to know? My mama taught me this wrong. My daddy's still teaching this stuff wrong. My, my grandpa was a pastor. He, ta he taught the thing wrong. Right? That's the hardest part. That's the reason why a lot of these people can't hold, you know what I'm saying? They'd be like, you trying to say my daddy is going to hell? You trying to say my, my grandma taught this wrong? My grandma loved me. And it's hard to separate those two things. Like, no, nah, I'm not saying she did it intentionally. I'm just trying to say she didn't know what the hell. She didn't know what she was talking about. How she gonna know? We was all slaves. Everything we were darn slaves. What you gonna say? Nah, you ain't teaching it right. I should slap you over the head with that dog. What you gonna shut your butt up? What's wrong with you? I didn't pick some darn cotton boy. Told me I ain't teaching this book right. From his point of view, well, I'm a, you know what I'm saying? I'm a Christian. Don't be trying to tell me how you gonna tell me you are African. How you gonna try to tell me a Christian ain't teaching it right? They became stuck up like we were stuck up. I'll slap you over the head with this darn whip, boy. You better get in there and take care of them darn kids. What's wrong with you? Right? So now we had to conform over time. And then all this stuff is slow and it's over time. But over time, you conform. You start to give up. Same thing with us. We had, we had, it was a time, man. We had, some of the stuff that's going on now, it'd be a riot so darn quick, spread over a whole city. But after a while, we conform. We say, you know what? Now we desensitize. They show us, they show us, we get shot every darn day on national television, all over darn YouTube. That thing don't mean nothing now. All we do is shake our hands. Oh, it's too bad. Sometimes now you get to the point, I don't even want to watch the video. People don't even want to watch it. They so, it's like you've seen it so many times, I don't even want to watch the video. It's just going to make me sad. Yeah, that's why I, mean, I couldn't watch Nipsey, man. I was and that, it, it just going to make me sad. It was a time where you watch that thing, I turn the darn city over. They start to turn the city over with Nipsey stuff. That thing stop quick because you start to conform. That's natural with anything. You start to conform over time. These people know it, right? We get to a point though, right? We get to a point where people understand the truth. You want the, you want, you want black on black crime to go down. What you gotta do? Teach, teach people the truth. They don't really want that stuff to go down. Just teach people the truth. A lot of these people on high ups, they know this information, right? What I'm saying sound crazy, like to us, cause like who gonna teach us this stuff? But when you do research and you see the books, you be like, y'all know about these books, right? 
Yeah, the first, the first depiction of the Messiah, he was black. Like in Russia, they got like today. Yeah. No, it's not. I'm, I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about like. Ooh, like you can dig something up. Today, you can go to Rome and you can see a black Messiah, right there on the wall, broad daylight. You're not gonna see pictures of it. They're not gonna broadcast that on TV. But it's there. There, they ain't tore it down. One time I googled the word Hebrew and it's a whole bunch of pictures of black artifacts, bunch of like black ancient. These yeah. folks know who we are. These people. The not not your average. You not your, the person you work with don't know. Right? They don't know what they talking about. They just as dumb as us. They don't know none of that stuff. But you get to talking about these historians, these people, powerful people who actually got access to some of these books. They know who we are. All right? Some of these people even know what this book say. The real thing of what this book say. This stuff ain't a secret. The problem is we just don't know. We haven't been taught. Nobody's taught us. Right? Keep going. Watch this. This is Isaiah chapter 28. This is verse what? Uh, 11? 13. Give me verse 11. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. Uh-huh. To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. Uh-huh. This is the refreshing. But what? Yet they would not hear. But they would not hear. You can't blame them. Right? You can't blame them. They didn't understand it. You were talking to them with another lip guy. God, you speaking to these people in a way they won't understand. Why would they, you know what I'm saying? Why would they continue to listen? So guess what happened to them after that? But the word of the Lord was unto them precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. So in other words, he said they wouldn't listen. So the word that was unto them, a puzzle, right? They couldn't figure it out. And for what reason? Watch the reason. Why did God do this? What was God's whole purpose of this? That they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. What's a snare? Trap. <coughs> the whole thing is a trap. They have painted a picture for us of God. God loves, God loves everybody. Ain't that what we've been told? God loves everybody. Right? He loves everybody. God will never give up on you. <laughs> then you read this. The man sit here and tell you flat out, who gonna get this? You think it's gonna be the babies that get it? No, the baby can't get it because it's a puzzle. You gotta put the puzzle together. I'm talking to them babies with a stammering lip and another time I'm talking to them in a way they're not gonna understand me. Right? So that means that when I'm talking to them, it's gonna remain as a puzzle to them. And I'm doing it that way so that they might go and fall backwards and be broken and snared and taken. In other words, I'm doing this so that they'll be trapped. So anybody who does not hear, anybody who's not dedicated, anybody who doesn't stay with it, you will fall into a trap. The whole thing is a trap. Grab Job for me. This is Job chapter, uh, this is Job chapter, uh, Job chapter what? Job chapter one, what I want, verse 11. Grab Job for me. Do you know, you get to saying this stuff, it's like, man, how you gonna say God don't love everybody? What's up? Huh? Uh, uh, Job chapter one. Give me. Uh, I want to say. Let him. Let him find the verse for me. Right? I, I want to say it's verse eleven though. But uh, Job chapter one. Put forth your hand and touch all that he has. And he will curse uh, I want before that. You know what I'm looking for, right? Uh, when they approach. Yeah. Six verse six. This is Job chapter one, verse six. You know what I'm saying? You you throw it out there. There's a lot of people. I wouldn't I wouldn't have I wouldn't have none of y'all. Right? None of y'all go to a person and let them just rouse some stuff out if they can't line it up with that book. You gotta be a you say something wild, just ask them, man. Alright, so where's they at in the book? And don't let them, don't let them, you know what I'm saying, sprinkle some boodle on you. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what they try to do. They'd be like, I'm trying to give a good example. They hit you with something like uh they like hit you with something like uh God loves everybody and then you know what I'm saying? They're trying to tell you God loves everybody. And then they prove it to you by taking to a verse and where it says, God so loved the world. Oh, that seems like it's saying the same thing at first glance. We're going to go to that next. I'm going to show you how that's not saying the same thing. This is uh, this Job chapter 1, verse 6. If you've got a line up, I mean strict line up too. I ain't talking about no, no oh, the same word was you. No, no, no. That thing got to be saying the same darn thing. <laughs> Sarah, playing with these people, been teaching my people these lies for years, and then standing on it. I'm okay with we all we all make mistakes. I'm okay with you teaching a lie and be like, oh my bad, I didn't I didn't realize I was teaching. Cause how are you supposed to know? What I'm not gonna stand for is you teach a lie and then you just stand on top of it like, well, it's still the truth. Drop that line. People out here suffering. Boy, this is uh, Job chapter one verse six. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. What's the son of God? Angel. 
All right, that's what we consider an angel. They say the sons of God. It's a direct creation of God. That's why I call the son of God. Right? So that's what we would call an angel. Say, so the angels approached God. And what else? Before the Lord and Satan came also among them. So Satan was right with these angels. Right? Let's see, let's, see, let's see how God was like, hey, what's up, angels? I'm going to ignore Satan because I don't mess with him. That's my arch enemy. Right, let's see how that's written right here. Let's see how it's God versus Satan. How say God hates Satan. Let's hear about it. And the Lord said unto Satan. Why are you talking to Satan? He got all these angels in front of him. He ain't say nothing to the angels. He went, he went to Satan. He said, what? Where are you coming from? Oh, where you been, bro? Right? He asked Satan where you been. All these angels sitting right here. Oh, these my angels. Now all of a sudden, Satan walk up. He like, oh, no, no, y'all get out there. Let me talk. Let me holler at Satan real quick. Hey, where you coming from? What's Satan say? And Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro, in the earth and from walking up and down in it. These people ain't taught us nothing. He said, I'm going to and fro the earth and walking up and down in it. What God say? And the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like Whoa. him on earth? Whoa! Why didn't Satan say, I was going to and fro, I've been trying to mess with Job? Satan wasn't thinking about darn Job. Satan was on his own plane, he walking back and forth. The most High God said, oh, while you were doing all that, you see Job? He snitched him out. He told on Job. Right? It gives us, if you read it and look at it for actually what it is, you learn who God is. This stuff, the deep people be feeding us. Oh, well, Satan, let me tell you, Satan, Satan to try to block your blessings. Satan, nigga, Satan like, man, I'm just following orders. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm walking up to God. God was like, listen, I, where you been? Oh, uh, you know what I'm saying? I was walking back and forth on her. Oh, did you see Job? Job. Watch what he said. Did you consider Job? Watch this. That there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that fears God and hates evil. Tell me God ain't out of line. He pumping him up. He know what Satan's job is. What's Satan's job? Accuser of the brother. He's supposed to accuse you. Satan's whole job is to be an adversary. So he's supposed to put you in play. He's a Think of it like a prosecutor, right? You got somebody who makes a crime, and you got a prosecutor. Their entire job is to accuse you of something, right? We found we got him on tape doing this, that, and the other. A prosecutor, if you set up a prosecutor for the state, they get their whole investigation team, right? If they got a case that they investigate, they can get a whole team. They can get the police to go out there and investigate something for them too, right? So that's how Satan is. Satan is like, his whole thing is, I, my job is to prove that you are a sinner. My job is to prove that you are not worthy of God. So now think about that. If that's his job, think about how God approached him. He's like, yo, where are you, where you, where you, where you coming from? I was just on the earth doing my job, trying to find somebody to accuse. Oh, you ain't seen Job? Oh, because Job, I mean, he perfect. Oh, no, you can't do nothing with Job. He perfect. Even if you tried to accuse him, he ain't going to fall. He's upright. Look how he came at him. Yo, I mean, these people have been teaching us the Bible all wrong. You got to look at it for exactly what it says. Look at it. Watch it. That there's none like him in the earth. He said, it ain't nobody like Satan. You can't get Job to fall. That's crazy. It's none like him in the earth. What else? The perfect and the upright man. Uh huh. One that fears God and hates evil. So now he's just poking at Satan. Ooh, you can't do your job with him, Satan. What you gonna do? Right? Watch how Satan come back. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Has not you made a hedge about him and about his house and all and all that he, all that he has on every side? So in other words, Satan is like, Oh, would you think he a perfect and upright man just because? Like, no, you protecting them, God. You got a hedge around the man. You built a fence around. Can't nobody touch him. So, of course, he going to praise you and he going to be an upright man. Watch what Satan suggests. Watch out. Watch how Satan was like, let me get at him. Right? Watch what I'm going to remove your hedge, God. Watch this. Uh, you have blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. Uh-huh. But put forth your hand now and touch put all forth. that he has. Satan, Satan said, put forth your hand? Or did he say, no, nah, I'm Satan. Let me put forth my hand. He said, put forth, put forth your hand. So now. whose hand is getting put forth? God. Put Don't let these people hand. lie to you. This is God's work. Something bad happened to you, that's God. Hey, ain't Satan. Satan just following orders. That's the only thing he's doing. He's not an enemy of God. What you talking about? Good is the good. prosecutor an enemy of the judge? No. The judge and the lawyer 
stand right before the, I mean, the, uh, the lawyer and the prosecutor stand right before the judge and they both state their case to the judge. Neither one of them is injured. Matter of fact, in a lot of cases, they go out and have drinks after the case. Am I lying? That's how it's set up. The most high God said, this is my, this is how I run it. What you talking about? You lost your darn mind. Watch this, keep going. But put forth your hand now and touch all that he has and he will curse you to your face. Most high God was like, I'm going to point out, it's Joe. He looked at Joe, he's like, man, look, Joe don't obey you for like no reason. It's just you, you protecting him. You bless everything you do. Everything you touch, you make it prosperous. Of course the man is going to be, you know what I'm saying? Try something else. You put your hand against him. Turn against him for a little bit. I bet you that man curse you, Joe. He's going to curse God to his darn face. That's what Satan trying to say. He accusing him. Like, man, I bet you just, just take away some of his good stuff. So watch this. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only upon himself put forth, uh, put not forth your hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. So now he told Satan, get him. Only thing you can't do, it don't hurt him personally. Everything else he got. Fast forward, the man, kids died. He took away all his riches, right? Gave him a whole bunch of stuff. Satan came back again to him and was like, okay, look, I still couldn't get him to sin. So I tell you what, take away a little more. Let me touch his skin. So then he had boils all over his skin, all types of stuff. And then at that point, that's when the whole story of Job kind of goes on, right? We go here to show that Satan is following orders, right? We look at it. What did God do to Job just now? Took his, uh, stuff away. He trapped him. That's the God we serve, right? He traps you. He puts you in a position... Everything could be going perfectly good in your life. And you a good person. You doing the right things. And just for the simple fact of proving that you really going to be right under all circumstances, he going to trap your butt. He going to put you in a situation where it's going to be challenging for you. And the same thing happened to Job. Same thing happened to us all the time. Right? That's, 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 it's important to understand the character. You know what I'm saying? When we dealing with, when we dealing with a lot of people, we, we've never known who God was. All we know is what these people tell us. They tell us, they tell us these little things. God love everybody, God. Is. And so this is the perception that we get. We get the perception of this man is hanging out in the sky with his arms stretched out to us, like, oh, please come to me. Like he's weak, like he's begging us to come to him. That's not him. God is stuck up. God is more like, man, look, you can come this way if you want to or not. But if you come, I got you. If you don't come, I'm lighting your butt up. That's his, he's a man, he's a, his attitude, he's a, he's a, the book say he's a man of war, like he's, he's rough, he's, and he's also gentle and kind, but he's also rough, the man to get right at you. And we don't understand that perception, so now when people try to teach about God, if I try to teach a person the truth without them understanding the different character of God, it doesn't compute, because they've been taught all their life, love, 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 God will never hurt you, he only wants the best for you. So when I sit here and tell you, oh no, God trying to set you up. Oh, no, that's not Satan doing that. Don't, don't, even, don't even talk to Satan. Don't even worry about Satan. Satan just following orders. If somebody, okay. So when when you go and somebody like serve your food wrong at the at a, at a store, how much time you spend, you, you spend talking to that person who serves you wrong? Not too much time. Who you going to want to talk to after that? I don't want to talk to the boss. Right? I'm not going to spend too much time chopping it. I know you don't know what you talk. I called by my father. I just bought a, a, a Galaxy S10. Right? But the thing brand new. I'm thinking, oh, thank you. They won't connect worth a darn. I can't get it to connect for the life of me. Right? If I'm riding around town, it stays unconnected. So then I call. I'm like, all right, um, so y'all got to do something about this. I spent $1,000 on this darn phone. I need y'all to do something. Right? They talk to me, well, sir, you have to call Samsung. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't believe I paid Samsung a dime. It's a Samsung phone, sure. I walked into, did I walk into a Samsung store or a Sprint store? Okay, okay, a Sprint store. And then I gave my money to a Sprint representative or a Samsung. Okay, a Sprint representative. So why am I calling Samsung? Maybe you call Samsung. If Samsung, if, they, if you bought your product from Samsung and then sold it to me, then maybe you get reimbursed from Samsung and then you give me whatever credit I'm asking for. That don't make sense. Well, sir, we can't do that. Oh, I'm done talking to you then. You can't do it. Because they didn't put that in your script. I need to talk to the boss. It only makes sense. I'm not about to hear talk. You don't have the authority to do it. I understand that. I'm not going to kill time talking to somebody who don't have the authority. So why are we talking? Why do people, people in church talk about I rebuke Satan? That makes no sense. Why are you rebuking Satan when he's following orders 
No, no, no. You need to be talking to God. All these things that happen to us, it's a reason for us to pray to God. It's a reason for us to reach out to God. But we waste all our time talking to Satan. Satan, you, you stand back. You get out of my life. I rebuke you, Satan. All these stuff they do in church. No, no, no. The Bible never told you to do that. In fact, it told you not to do it. Very clearly, it said, you know what? Even the angels wouldn't rebuke Satan. That's what the book say. The angels wouldn't even revile his name. For what? Does it make sense? He's just a worker. They put the man way too high up on the pedestal. Satan? I ain't got no time to be talking to you, God. Listen. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what you got going on. I'm gonna get you, boy. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what type of trap you got me in right now. I just need you to fix this for me real quick because I can't take it. I'm going to mess around and slip. I'm going to mess around and fall. I've been trying to do the right thing. And now you got my wife talking to me crazy. Right? God, I don't know what to do. I'm about ready to leave this out, but I know I got kids. All right, relax. Right? Then that, through, through that conversation, things get done. Let me tell you, it's not going to get done. My wife re yelling at me, talking all this mess. Satan, I rebuke you. She going to slap the mess out of me. You call me Satan, Wyatt? You know what I'm mean? saying? Now I'm really in the bond. Goodness gracious. I'm really leaving now. You know what I'm talking about? That's how these people get caught up, because what they're doing is not effective. Right? Give me John. This is John chapter 3. What's up? <laughs> and we about to wrap up too. I ain't even get through all this. You hit? You over there? What's wrapping up? What's wrapping up? Don't ever ask me that, boy. <laughs> No, if you need to leave, you know, we, but we about to wrap up though. This, uh, this, huh? It's John chapter 3. We're going to start with John 3.16. We ever heard John 3.16? I mean, Tim Tebow wrote it right here. John 3.16. Huh? Austin 3.16. Austin 3.16. That's a whole different one. <laughs> that, 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 that was legit. So. You know what I'm saying? That was legit. That's the bottom line. And that's the bottom line. Because Stone Cold said so. That boy cracked them things open like this. He ran them things. He ran them things. I love me some soap. That boy ran up from the top of the turnbuckle. He slapped them things together. Ah, I don't know nothing about no stone cold. He was wild. This is uh, John 3.16. Watch this. We should all know this one by heart. For God so loved the world. Uh -huh. That is his only begotten son. I mean, God that so loved like, the world. That ain't the present read the two, so that's not a lot. You look at the thing. Look. You look at the thing. This thing's so sweet. I mean, this is the one. They want you to know you can be a Christian too. Where they gonna take you? John 3.16. For God, what? So love the world. Oh, he gave his God. only begotten son. He gave his only begotten son. Watch this. That whosoever believes in him. Yeah, I mean, if you believe in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Right? So we look at that, and they give us that, and that's how they show us. See, God loves everybody. It say that he loved the world. He, it love, he loved the world. We read that, God so loved the world. Guess how we read that? We take that as meaning God loved the world so much. Like a lot. Right? Go back two verses. This is uh, 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. This is history. Stole. Moses, this is history. Right? If you go back into the book of Numbers, right? Way back in the beginning of the book. We ain't got to get it right now. It'll tell you about a story when people were acting rebellious in the wilderness, right, in the desert, and Moses had to, Most High God told him to, to, to take a snake because they were getting plagued with diseases. So the Most High God told him to take a snake, hold it up in the sky, and anybody who looked at that snake, it's, a, it's like a brass snake, anybody who looked at that snake, they would be healed from their disease. So Moses did it. And the people who looked at the, at the, the serpent, they were healed from it. So now he's, he's, he's referring back to that story, right? You ever seen like a, uh... Like with hospitals that have like this thing with a snake wrapped around it, like that little. Yeah. yeah. That's where it come from. The whole this book influenced the whole world, but that's where that come from. That 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 serpent wrapped around. I think you mentioned that. You know what I'm saying? That that thing. You know what I'm saying? That's where that thing come from. Watch this. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So he's saying, just like Moses lifted up that serpent, because everybody we know our history. So you say that to us. This is y'all. Sure, it's Jesus talking to us. Right? So we know our history at this time. He's like, well, yeah, when Moses did that, he's like, just like Moses lifted up that serpent, that's the same way the Son of Man got to be lifted up. When you say Son of Man, he's talking about himself. Yeah, that's the same way I got to be lifted up. He's basically saying, 
The same way that they did it to be cured from their disease is the same way y'all going to have to do it to be cured from your sin. Right? So he's like, they're going to lift me up the same way. Watch this. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. All right? Keep going. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten So now we look at it different. When you say so, right? We kind of look at the word so today as like so much. It's, it's kind of like a description of how much of something. It's, a, it's almost a measurement. You know what I'm saying? Like, I love you so much. But in actuality, the word so is like, it's a comparative word. Like so. I love you like so. We just got to the point that we stopped pointing out what that so was. I love you. Like, in the back in the day, you might say, I love you so much. And you would, you would do something with your, I love you so much. Like, this is how much I love you. Or I love you so much. Like, this is how much I love you. So now it's just taken for granted that piece of show, what that comparison is. Now everybody just kind of knows when we say so, we're talking about something with a large measurement. So I love you so much, and we assume that so means a lot, right? But in old English, that wouldn't have been the case. The old English is saying, I love you like, like so. This. So this story I just told you, the same way that God loved the children in the wilderness is the same way that God loves the world. God loved the children in the wilderness enough to plague their butt when they were doing the wrong thing and then give them a way to look at something to get out of it. If you look at that story, some of them didn't look and some of them died. So when they say God so loved the world, he's saying, I love the world in the same way I love the wilderness. I'm going to give whoever looks an opportunity to be cured from their sin. The rest of y'all are going to die. Right? So God so loved the world. Let's keep going. I mean, we'll just shoot hold right now. Tim Tebow will be mad up in here. Keep going. Watch this. God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Uh -huh. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. God didn't send him to condemn. They like that one too. God didn't send him. See, you know what your problem is? They tell them. You know what your problem is, brother? <laughs> Y'all preach condemnation. Y'all always talking about people wrong and it's sin. See, that's not God. Even, even John 3, it tell you, God didn't send Jesus down here to condemn the world. Oh, he didn't. You write it. Do because it do say that. And you know what? We write by the book. If the book say it, we gotta go with it. It do say that. Let's see what it say next. Let's see why God, God didn't send him to condemn the world. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Oh, okay. So he came. He came to save him. Why wouldn't he condemn him though? He that believes on him is not condemned. Uh huh. But he that believes not is condemned already. Oh, you was already condemned. Well, why would I need to condemn something that's already condemned? Yo, she was trying to tell, I didn't come here to condemn the world. I came here to save you. You was condemned before I got here. You started out condemned. That's why he didn't come to condemn the world. Right? Watch this. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Uh-huh. And this is the condemnation. Oh, now we talk about, now he's defining the condemnation. So you are already condemned, and this is the condemnation. This is how you define the condemnation. What else? <laughs> That light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light. Right? So the condemnation is, there's a good thing in the world, but you prefer a bad thing. There's light, there's you being exposed, but you prefer to be hidden. Right? There's the right thing, but you prefer to do the wrong thing. Right? Watch this. So that's the condemnation. That's how you, if you want to know if you, if you condemned or not, it's when you prefer to do the wrong thing. Right? Watch this. Keep going. And this is a condemnation, that light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Uh-huh. For everyone that does evil hates the light, and neither comes to the light unless his deeds should be reproved. So now tell me why the Christians never read down that far. Because now I start talking about what you have to do. You are condemned if your deeds are evil. You've already not, not I don't have to condemn you. Jesus don't have to condemn you. You are already condemned, according to the Bible, if your deeds are evil. But God so loved the world, he loved the world just like he loved the wilderness with Moses, that he's giving you an opportunity to come out of that condemnation. What does that look like? Look on him and come to the light and change your deeds. Right? Just like when we started off, we read Hebrews 5 and it told us that the basic principle is repent from, uh, from dead works and turn towards God. So that's turning away from sin and turning towards God. Looking at the brass serpent. The stuff, when you look at it in the book, sure, we jumped around, right? Where we start? Isaiah. Then after that, we went from Isaiah, we went to Hebrews. 
Then after that, we went from Hebrews and we said, you know what, we got to read where we go? Job. Job, right? We looked at Job. When we look at it, all these different places, I mean, we took this precept and this precept and we put it on top of each other. But it made sense, <coughs> right? And then we took this line and this line and we put it on top of it. And it makes sense, right? And you take a little bit from here and a little bit from there and you put it on top. And it makes sense, right? And watch this. A little bit from the Old Testament, a little bit from the New Testament. Last one. Go to Matthew chapter 13, verse 51. Maybe I want 52, 1 and 2. It's Matthew chapter 13, verse 51, 52, 1 and 2. Show you how the difference between somebody who's skilled with this book and somebody who's just aren't playing patty cake. What do I want? 51? Yeah. What is that? Yahushua said unto them, Have you Yahushua, Yahushua asked a question to his disciples. He said, What? Have you understood all these things? I asked y'all, did y'all understand all these things? What is Matthew It's Matthew chapter 13, verse 51. Read it again. Yahushua said unto them, Have you understood all these things? Have y'all understood all these things? Okay. Let's see. And he said unto him, Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Then said he unto them, Therefore, every scribe which is instructed. Pay attention to what he said. Every scribe. So a scribe in our in our in, in our culture, a scribe was someone who took the the scriptures and they they copied them. You know, we had no printers or nothing, so they took the the scripture and they had to copy it by hand. And those people were considered the experts because if you have to copy something by hand, you learn it, right? So they were considered the experts. So he's saying every scribe that would be an expert of the Old Testament. Who's also what? Instructed unto the kingdom of heaven. So that's the New Testament. So he said every scribe who also knows about the New Testament, in other words, every expert of the New Testament and the Old Testament, is going to have what features? Is like unto a man that is a householder, which brings forth out of his treasure things new and old. He said this is like somebody who owns a house, and they have treasure, and when they bring stuff out of their treasure, they bring old stuff and new stuff. That's why we talk about New Testament, Old Testament, and we put it all together and bring it together. Right? That's how it works with a skilled person. When you got the word, when you got the word and you skilled with the word. A lot of stuff that we look at, we are not skilled. We have not been skilled. Because it takes time. You have to be able to sit. How did we start off? Who who we was teaching when we started? I mean, did we just jump in the book? We used to call each other and be like, oh, I think this is what this means. Did we jump out and be like, ah, this is what this means? Heck no. How many years we spent just live, sitting in the living room and all of us just reading whatever it say together? About four or five years. That's all we did. Four or five years just sat in the living room and just read it. Ain't, ain't nobody telling you what it means. It's just like, that's what it say. I think this is what it might mean. We all just kind of bouncing stuff off each other. But you have to do that until it's like, oh, I got this. Then you start teaching. But you can't move too fast with this thing. You get to moving too fast, then what? Some you might miss. Oh, you don't miss it. Yo, you gonna miss. You get the moving too fast, then you gonna miss it. First, we have to learn how to do what. Okay. Ain't no other way around it. You ain't gonna get to one without the other. All right. We good. Chip said you gotta go to work. I'm about to play. <laughs> I appreciate you, bro. Let's pray out. It's nine twenty. <laughs>